Hi, welcome to this week's dynamic practice. It's called Hit the Middle, and that is a phrase from a koan that I'll share at the end of our practice during final relaxation. We're working on the core line. Uh, the core line in our body, it's a vertical line from foot to head that encompasses the inner arch of our foot, up the back of the leg, inseam of the leg, through psoas, and the front side of our spine. So it's not quite the back, it's not quite the front, it is the middle. So it's like in front of our spine, behind our abdomen, comes up along the back, uh, the front side of the spine, encompasses the lungs, and so we'll be doing some breath work at the end. Uh, but as a wide variety of practices as we're doing, the similarities are gonna be to hit the middle and to keep things stable. So for props, as usual, a block and a strap, we'll be doing a couple practices where if you have a bolster, uh, you, you might find it's more comfortable to put your hips on the bolster rather than a block, but a block will do just fine. For this practice, we're also using the wall. Uh, we're using the wall in half moon pose. If you don't feel comfortable balancing half moon in the middle of the room, you could always take your hip against the wall and you can balance like this, okay? And we'll also be doing headstand practices. And again, if you're not comfortable doing a headstand in uh, the middle of the room, you can always do headstand against the wall. So, uh, and if you don't do the headstand at all, uh, I'll give you something else to do during that time, okay? Great, uh, so please let's start. Let's lie on the back. And plant your feet flat on the ground. And feet about hip distance apart, not quite together, just like comfortably apart. And take your hands onto hips. And what I'd like you to do is you inhale, you're gonna press one knee out and down. And then as you exhale, come back to center. And do the same thing on the other side. And what I'd like you to um, distinguish in this first practice is your ability to move your leg without moving your hips. So if I said, for example, get your knee down to the floor, most of us would have to turn our hips to get the knee down. So your knee doesn't have to go down to the floor. It's just gonna go out as far as you can. And right now my hands are on my hip pointers and what that allows me to do is see if and when my hips are prone to move. And what we're going to do today is keep the hips in the middle, facing forward, non-moving and stable as we're moving the legs. So try that another couple times. Inhale, knee out to side. Exhale, you bring the knee back up. Go back and forth like this once more per side. And so you can start to distinguish between leg movement and hip movement, or in this case, hip non-movement. Okay? Great. And then you come back to center. From there, release and extend your legs forward and press one heel out. You can feel the hips slide with you. Heel drives out and exhale, come back and relax. Other heel presses forward. Exhale, come back and relax. Go back and forth like that a couple times to warm up the calves. We'll be standing on one leg today. So as you press your heel out, notice the connectivity uh, down the inseam of your leg. So of course you might be feeling other things. The calf is getting a stretch. The hips are moving in this one. That's fine. Uh, and you might feel other stretches besides, but as you press the heel forward, notice See if you can think down the inseam of your legs, the inside of your legs. And inseam of the legs comes up through the front side of the spine. So really it's our, it's our centerpiece. All right, very nice. So you press one heel forward and you exhale, press your second heel forward. And then from there, release. Great. And so from here, if you have your bolster, uh, you feel free to put a bolster underneath your hips. Otherwise, you can take the block. Take it width-wise, take it as long as you can. And I'm demonstrating at the lowest level. If you want to go up to a medium level, uh, go ahead. But we're going to be doing some strong leg stretches, so, and we'll be up here for a little bit. So just don't get too high, okay? 
So from here, you're going to take your strap, strap around right foot, and you're going to take your right leg up in the air, strap around, and in fact, the loop, make a loop, please, around your foot, and you're going to hold your right leg up in the air. So I have the loop around right leg, right foot, press your heel up, and at the same time, press your left heel forward. All right, so Supta Pada 1, the option here increases the distance between hips, or between thighs, I should say. So this thigh is upward. This thigh gets to extend a little bit toward the floor. So the hips are going in slightly further, uh, so the thighs are going in slightly more opposite directions. You press your right heel up, of course you're going to get a stretch on the back side of your right leg. But because the hips are elevated, uh, I, I also invite you to feel the, the inseam of the leg through the left side. So left heel, as it presses forward, your thigh extends a little bit. And see if you can feel any length through your psoas, which is from the inside of your leg up to the front side of your spine. It's where it connects. It's, it's the only muscle that connects thigh to low back. Okay, and we're going to be working plenty with the psoas today. So press your heel out, press this heel up, and this is Supta 1. From here, the second variation, you're going to take your top leg out to the right. So right leg's going to go to the right. You can hold the strap in your, uh, in your right hand. Get your right elbow to the floor, ASAP, and now your right leg is going to go toward the floor. But what happens to the hips? The hips are going to want to roll with you. So I encourage you, press your left heel forward, try to ground your left hip on the block or bolster, and what's going to help that is as you press your heel to the right, roll your belly to the left. So this is Supta Padangasthasana 2, right heel presses right, navel rolls to the left so we can reference the middle. And that middle we can the mind's eye can follow it down the inseam of your left leg. Press that heel forward. Left heel presses forward. Breathe into lower abdomen. Deep breath here. And twice more. Breath in. Big exhale. And one last. Okay, great. And then you're going to use the inseam of your leg. Bring your leg back up. And exhale, you can get rid of the loop. Feet flat on the floor. Uh, let everything re uh, relax back in toward middle. Okay, great. And then, uh, so let's switch sides. I'm gonna change direction, but you don't have to. So you're gonna take your left leg up in the air and the loop goes around your left leg, left foot. Okay. So here we have soup the one with the hips elevated, left heel's driving upward, right heel presses forward. Okay, so this is a different schema in the body. This might feel tighter or looser or it's qualitatively different, uh, descriptively different. But with your left leg up and the, and the hips elevated, your right thigh gets a chance to extend a little bit. So the right thigh gets a little bit lower to the ground, heel on the floor, and you press your right heel forward. And I know that there's a big stretch uh, down many of your left legs, the back of the left leg. But also take your mind's eye down the front side of your spine through through like inseam of uh, or inner hips and down the inseam of your leg. If you can press your left, right, sorry, right heel forward, you might get a sense of, the, of that connection down the inseam of your right leg through, uh, through lungs, essentially. So another breath or two here. Notice what you can notice. Notice that your hips are pointing straight up. So hip pointers, uh, like straight up at the, at, the, at, the, at the sky. And we're going to keep your hips up high as we take this out into Supta Pada 2. So you can hold the strap largely with your left hand. And, and keep your hips straight up as you take your left leg out to the side. Get your elbow down ASAP as it's going to act like a kickstand. 
And as your leg goes to the left, the tendency is going to be for your right hip to elevate. Press your right heel forward and drive your left hip into the floor. It's almost like a counter sink to pressing the left heel out to the left. Okay, so your left leg is to the left. Right heel presses forward. Now also roll the skin of your abdomen to the right so your abdominals can get involved in trying to keep your right hip as heavy as possible so your hips are pointing up toward the ceiling. Okay, and of course there's probably a big inseam stretch uh, down your left leg. Okay, extra stretches here in Supta Pada 2. But see if you can notice either stretch or length through the inseam and inner hip down your right side. And notice that if you, if you press your right heel forward actively, uh, it might come out in sort of a bas relief, like it might feel more apparent as you press your heel out. Breathe into the space, breathe into the stretch. All right, very good. And then as you inhale, you're gonna make your way up to center Leg up in the air, and then you can release. Feet flat on the floor, pause here. All right, great. So you can keep your hips elevated on the bolster or a block. Uh, if any of these practices, this is happy baby and half happy baby pose. Uh, so uh, if the hips up on the block or bolster is too intense, just come down to the ground. From here, you're gonna hug both knees in the chest, and that's option number one. Option number two is to take happy baby, which you take hands on two feet, and you draw your knees toward the floor. Okay. And so this is going to round the spine a little bit, uh, get a length through the sacrum, length through your, the origins of your hamstrings. If you want to stretch the hamstrings a little more, keep your knees where they are, meaning don't lift them up, keep them down, and take your toes a little further back. That's going to give you a more formidable stretch in the hamstrings. Two or three more breaths here. If you can, draw your navel in a little bit and breathe into your low back. Okay, great. And then from here, keep holding your right foot and you're gonna let go of your left foot, left foot plants onto the floor. So this is a half happy baby pose option here. Keep on drawing your right knee toward the floor. And you kind of stay here. If this feels like the thighs are going in far enough different directions for a stretch through the hips, that's all fine and good. If it's available, start sliding your right heel forward and it can slide forward two inches and maybe that's enough. Eight inches, maybe that's enough. If it's available, and as long as it's on the floor, slide your heel as far forward as you can. So with the hips elevated, it's gonna be a more intense stretch uh, through, throughout both hips. Okay, so the back side of your right leg is getting more of a stretch and um, applicable to, to the theme of this, the sequence, mind's eye down the left leg inseam through psoas and low back. So you drive your left heel forward. Breathe several times here. Breathe into lower abdomen, Very good, take a deep breath in. Okay, great, and then you can, you can recoil the leg, draw your knee in, take full happy baby pose, completely happy baby, and breathe into low back. And let's try half Ananda Balasana on the other side. So you're gonna take your right foot to the floor, left leg stays where it is, left leg's the happy baby leg, and you're gonna stay here if this feels like enough of, a, enough of a stretch, if it's appropriately intense for you, you stay here. If it's available, you can slide your heel forward two inches. That'll mean the thighs go in more opposite directions. Eight inches, 10 inches, two feet. You slide your leg, heel forward along your mat. As you press your heel forward, mind's eye down inseam of right leg, so you press the heel forward, inner, inner arch activates, and then you're gonna notice, hopefully, 
at least some length, if not some stretch, uh, down inseam of right leg through psoas, which comes along the front of the sacrum, and then it connects into your low back on the right. So several breaths here, breathe into the length, breathe into the space, breathe into the stretch. A few more breaths here. Very nice. Take a maha breath, a big breath in, and then bring your right foot back in into full happy baby. Draw knees in, you can round your spine. Take a deep breath in. And exhale from there, release both feet to the floor. Breathe in the abdomen, engage your glutes, press your feet down to support your sacrum. You're gonna squeeze your glutes and lift up. Block comes out from underneath and exhale from there, you land on the floor. Okay. All right, we've done a fair amount already. Hopefully the hips feel uh, somewhat warmed up. We're gonna continue warming them up. Come up to seated uh, and you can face me. At this point, I'm mirroring you. Uh, and we're gonna bring your, this is my left shin, but you're gonna bring your right shin in front of left. Okay? So right shin in front of left. Slide your sitting bones back, take a deep breath in, you're gonna lengthen up through navel, and then exhale, you're gonna slide your hands forward as far as you can. So as far as you can, you listen to your knees, hips, sacrum, low back. Uh, this is the, the first big rounding of the spine today. And as you forward fold, you can draw your navel in a little bit and breathe into your low back. So a few more breaths uh, here, and then we'll take a variation. Great. And so you can press yourself back up. So you lengthen up your navel. And then from here, a skin below the navel, it's going to be a very important cue today. Skin below the navel, you roll it to the right, and then you fold to the right, however far uh, to the right you're going to go. Go ahead and take it, twist first, and then forward fold. Okay? And as you're folding to the right, press your left sitting bone in, into the floor so the hips stay still, and roll skin below navel to the right. So for me, that feels like a big lower back adjustment. And as you're folding to the right, breathe into the stretch in your left low back. Another few breaths here. In Parshva Sukhasana. All right, and then enjoy the sort of reinfusion as you come back up. You can lean back a little bit and switch legs. So at this point, your left shin is in front of your right. Okay, slide your sitting bones back. Inhale here, and then exhale, you forward fold. Okay. How far you go, muscle minus does not matter to me. As long as knees feel okay, hips feel okay, all the joints are, are, are square with you. So you reach as far forward as you can. You can round your spine. And as you're reaching forward, you can draw your navel in a little bit and breathe into your low back. So it's like you're taking your abdominal breath back. And we'll pause here, breathe a few more times. Great, so you come back up, you lengthen, and then from here you're gonna roll navel to the left, skin below the navel, slides left as far as you can go. From there, you forward fold, not forward fold, side fold to the left. You maximize the twist, and then you fold wherever you can go, okay? You pause here, and the idea here is to keep the hips still as you roll your navel to the left. So it's a skin below the navel, it's really specific. And as you roll the skin of the belly, you're gonna feel the lower back stretch. Your hips are gonna to wanna to move. Plant, your, plant the opposite sitting bone, your right sitting bone, presses into the floor, 
and breathe into your right side. Another breath or two here. All right. Great. And then inhale. You make your way back up. All right. Yeah. Feel the length, length through the side columns. Lungs are nice and light. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. From here, we're going to place the block in between our thighs and um, tra transition into downward facing dog. So, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take the block between thighs. Hands plant. Lift your thighs back and up. And so, first, uh, first sort of transi transitionally standing pose of the day, you're going to press your hands down, lift your upper thighs back so the front side of your spine gets as long as possible. All right. Now to get the front side of the spine a little longer, well, and, and I'll also squeeze the block. I'm gonna say that squeeze the block. And to get the front side of the spine longer, you're gonna lift your heels, bend your knees a little, and then tilt your sitting bones even higher, so there's more space along the front side of your spine. And you keep that extra space as you bolt your heels back. So it's really strong work. And even with all the stretches going on, we're still referencing inseam of the legs. We're still referencing the middle. Several breaths here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lift your, lift your block up and back another millimeter. See if, we can, see if we can work millimeters here. Two more breaths here. And then we'll transfer, or we'll transition into plank position. So the next time you inhale, you're going to imagine your fingertips are on a ledge. You're going to just peek over the ledge. Press your hips toward the floor. Draw your bottom ribs up. So, Adho Mukha Dandasana, downward facing staff pose. You press your heels back. Your lungs are lengthened forward. Squeeze the heck out of the block and drive your hands through the floor. Four or five more breaths here. And even as a lot of the body's warming up, you're referencing midline. You're referencing the breath. Intellectually, we're hitting the middle. Even through like the wind and rain of this pose. Okay, very good. And then from here, you can, you're going to have to tiptoe this one. But you're going to tiptoe up to standing. All right, so we're in Uttanasana here. Squeeze the block. Inhale, just come part way up and lengthen your lungs forward. Block back so the front side of the spine gets very long. Exhale from there, refold. Squeeze the block as you come all the way up to standing. Arms sweep up overhead. And exhale from there, palms come through heart center. We're going to take a sun salutation A, one of them. Take a deep breath in. Well, modified. You'll see in soon. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Squeeze the block. And then exhale, send the block back and up as you forward fold. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the lungs forward, and then exhale. You're gonna have to like tiptoe back, or if you wanna jump back, you could, but the block's in between squeezing back into plank. And we're gonna hold plank. This is, this is the modification. Squeeze the block, drive your hands through the floor, and even while things, they may start to shake a little bit, you may have to breathe a lot more. Then you can feel your temperature rise a little bit. Even with all of this activity going on, focus on breath, focus on your core line, inseam of legs through front of spine, and your breathing. Two more breaths here. Take a big inhale. Take a big exhale. And one last time, breath in. All right, and you can lower halfway down or all the way down. Tops of feet on the floor, lifting the cobra or upward facing dog. Okay, so this is cobra with hips on the ground. And then from here, you're gonna squeeze the block back into downward facing dog. All right. And like we did in the first downward facing dog, lift your heels, bend your knees. Now squeeze the heck out of the block as you lift your inner thighs up. And then keep your thighs up as you press your heels back. So energetically, thighs are lifting up. It's like you're trying to lift the block up toward the ceiling. And there's two more breaths here. Take a big inhale, big exhale. One last time, breath in. Okay, great. Now you can step or uh, to, you have to like waddle up toward the front of the mat. In Uttanasana, squeeze the block. Inhale, look forward. Squeeze the block. Exhale, you fold. 
and squeeze the block as you come all the way up. Arms sweep up overhead, take a huge inhale here. And exhale, palms to heart center, and by your sides in Tadasana with the block. So uh, if, you're, if you're used to a Tadasana with feet together, obviously with the block, that's not gonna really work for your knees. So make sure your knees are okay. Squeeze the block and feel the hips pointing straight forward. That's gonna be a, a, a cue in a couple of our uh, standing postures today. So two more breaths here. Take a big inhale, big exhale. And one last time, breathe in. Okay, very good. So bend your knees, we're gonna use the block for a triangle. Once again, I'm mirroring you. So you're gonna step your right foot forward, okay? Um, and then from here, the block goes to the outside of your right shin. And hands onto hips, and you're gonna cut, you bend your front knee a little bit, and then just like we did in downward facing dog, you're gonna sort of like cut the inner thigh back and up. And you're gonna sort of almost pour yourself over your front leg. Hand goes down to wherever it goes. All right, now drive your big toe mound into the floor, drive your heel into the floor, and then from here, energetically, you're almost trying to shrink the foot, lifting your inner arch up the leg, okay? So big toe, here's the inner arch, big toe down, heel down, and you're trying to squeeze the arch up the inseam of your leg. That's connected to the inner leg. From here, you keep the, you keep the big toe and heel grounded and roll your navel opposite. And what this does is create a whole bunch of space through the core line, length through the core line. Top arm can reach up if you'd like, but you're gonna roll your navel up. And just make sure you're not, you don't have to look up if you don't like. You can look wherever you want, but skin below the navel rolling up, 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 up. Okay, yeah, enjoy that. Drive the bones of your feet through the floor, bone heavy. And one last time here, take a deep breath in. Big exhale. All right, hand back to hip. And inhale, we're gonna press through your feet, come all the way up, and bend your knees. We'll just switch sides. If you have to step up to the mat and change sides, you can do that too. But now your left toes are pointing to the short side of the mat. Block to the outside of your left shin. And find that, find that bone heaviness in the foot. You drive the foot down. So bone weight down. And then from here, you bend your knee a little bit, bend this hip, and then you're gonna cut the inseam of your leg back, 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 back. And it's like you're pouring yourself over your front leg, okay? Hand goes to the block. I have that at the mid-level, whatever height works for you, okay? But, but find the structure here. So we're working with the, we're working with some solidity. So you're pressing the big toe now down. You're pressing the heel down. And then from there, you're gonna energetically, you're gonna, like you're shrinking the foot, lift the apex of the arch up the leg through the inseam. So bones are down, it's almost like you're trying to shrink the skin, like shrink, wrap the skin up the leg, and you're, and you're rolling the navel up toward the ceiling away from that grounding. So you're lengthening the core line, offering a lot of space to it. If you want to reach your arm up, that's okay. Eyes wherever you'd like, but make sure that the belly's rolling up and not just the head. Now breathe into the space, breathe into the engagements. Two or three more times, take a deep breath in. Big exhale, and one last time, breath in. Very good, exhale, hand onto the hip. You can feel the bone weight of your feet. Drive them down as you lift up. Okay, great, bend your knees, and we'll go to the first side. Option number one is to take triangle again. Option number two is to take Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose, and you can do that against the wall, or you can do that in the middle of the room if you want to explore your balance, okay? So from here, right foot, uh, we're gonna, I step back on the mat because I wanna place the block on my mat as well. So you're gonna bend your front knee, lift the arch already because this is the foot we're gonna be uh, balancing on. So you drive the bones into the foot, drive the bones into the floor, lift your arch. And from here, you're gonna take the block uh, in front of the toes, and to the pinky toe side, okay? Now from here, transfer your weight over your standing leg before you lift the back foot. So I swept myself forward. 
Now all I have to do is drive the bones of the feet into the floor and it's almost like I'm floating straight up toward the sky. All right, and as the bones of your feet are driving down, roll your navel up toward the ceiling. Okay, so uh, the, cues, uh, the cues we're using today, same cues in triangle, focus on the feet and the belly rolling up so that there's more length and space through your core line. All right, if you're in triangle, you can lift your arm up. If you're in half moon pose, you can lift your arm up. And it doesn't matter where you put your head, just roll your navel up. If you're against the wall, you can really go to town on the belly rolling skyward. And there's two more breaths here. Take a big inhale. Exhale, shrink your standing foot a little more up the, uh, up the inseam of your leg. Okay, and then you're gonna bend your, if you're in half moon pose, bend your knee until the back foot comes down, so you lower down first, and then you transfer your weight back and come up to standing. All right, take a quick ta-da. Uh, that was a lot of work for the standing leg, so notice that. My hope is it feels like it's more recruitable, more engageable, and more uh, collectible. All right, great. Now let's try that on the other side. So please, you can step your left foot uh, to, so that the toes point to the short side of the mat. I back up a little bit, so when I put my block down, it's on the mat. And so your left foot, drive, bend your left knee a little bit and drive the foot through the floor right away, okay? Treat it already like, a, like the only thing on the ground, basically. And you're driving the bones into the floor, shrink the skin of the foot up, and then you're gonna take the block to, to the pinky toe side of the toes, and you're gonna sh shift your weight first forward before lifting your back foot. So all my weight's on my standing foot already, and then now all I have to do is, it looks like a hot air balloon, you roll the belly up. Mm -hmm. And then from here, you keep on driving the foot down, roll the navel up as far as you can. Roll belly up, belly up, belly up, belly up, belly up, belly up. Your arm can go up toward the ceiling if you'd like. Okay? So people in triangle and people in half moon pose, you're all doing the same thing, working on the bone weight of your foot. Drive it down, and then energetically you're lifting inner arch all the way up through, uh, through hip center, rolling your navel up toward the ceiling. And it doesn't matter where you push, you can look up, you can look down, look straight ahead but roll your navel up as far as you can. So bones down, energetically lift up. Two more breaths, take a big inhale into the space, big exhale, and one last time, breath in. Okay, great, now, so first lower down like a helicopter, you're gonna come straight down first, and then you sweep your hips back to come up to standing, and exhale. All right, so if, you're on, if you did that against the wall, come back to your mat. We can place the block to the side for now. Okay, wide well, legged forward fold is next. So uh, if it's okay for knees, you turn the toes inward just a little bit, bend your knees, and then even though the legs are wide, it's as if the block is between inner thighs, and you're gonna send the inner thighs back and up as you take a forward fold here. So you drive your feet through the floor, all right, and now what we did, that all that effort, that work, we did on one foot in triangle and half moon pose, we're now doing with both feet at the same time. So you drive the bone weight of your feet through the floor. I always imagine that I'm trying to leave a footprint in concrete that is almost dry. So it's hard to get in there, right? So you really need to press the bones down. And as you're pressing the bones down, you lift the skin of the feet up, like putting on a sock. It's just lifting the inner arches up, 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 up. And then that helps lift, lift the inner thighs, lift the sitting bones up toward the ceiling. Okay? So keep that strong work in the legs. And then from here, to get the inner, to get the adductors working a little more, it's as if you're trying to bunch the mat up underneath you. So imagine that. Or imagine if you were standing on ice, what would it take in your, in your legs to start sliding your feet inward? Okay, so it's a lot of activity, a lot of structure. Uh, even through all this energy, see if you can focus on inner legs, focus on the breath. Let your legs warm up. 
They're both opening and engaging. There's two or three more breaths here. Deep inhale, big exhale. And then one last time, breath in. Okay, great, now bend your knees a little bit and then hands come onto your hips. You're going to slide your glutes down and forward, drive your feet through the floor and lift your lungs skyward. Arms can sweep up overhead. Inhale even more, lift your lungs high, fingertips high. And exhale from there, release. You can step your feet closer together. Into Tadasana. Okay, great. So uh, now that we have this, this uh, strong engagement in the legs, we're gonna try a uh, tree pose and Utita Hasta Parangustasana. If you don't know the Sanskrit, don't worry, I'll guide you through it. But both of them are standing on one, one foot. So if you want to work on the, the form of it and not worry about balance, one finger on the wall for the next two poses is, is perfect, okay? Tree pose. Just like we did in half moon pose, the easier thing to do is just to go in one direction and then another direction, rather than trying to do both things at once. So from Tadasana, shift all your weight into your right foot and feel the bone weight of your right foot first, okay? I say in my classes a lot, the secret to standing on one foot is to not need the other one, okay? And this is how it gets done. So all your weight, now your right foot is completely responsible for your body weight, now your left foot, we don't really need it as much. So you're gonna bend your left knee forward to begin, okay? Hands, please take them on hip pointers, and I'd like you to have them face whichever direction you're facing. Keep them facing in that direction as you take your knee out somewhere to the side. Now the tendency is gonna be for whichever knee is going back, let me demonstrate this by the side too. Whichever knee is going back, this hip is gonna to wanna to go back, so people's trees tend to kind of space all over the place. Okay, what I'd like you to do is keep your hips forward as you take your knee somewhere out to the side and bring your foot, if you need to reach down and, and, and grab it, bring your foot uh, to inner leg or the shin somewhere, okay? Now you're going to have to squeeze your, squeeze your uh, right hip a little, uh, squeeze your left hip a little bit. Press it forward and then lift your lungs up, okay? Hips are pointing forward even as your knee goes out to the side. It doesn't go straight out to the side. Most people don't do that. Maybe someone in Cirque du Soleil does it all the time. But for us regular humans, it goes somewhere, but not all the way, okay? Hips forward, two more breaths here. If you want to take your arms up, you could. Arms out to the side as well. Uh, palms in Anjali Mudra, that's fine. And drive the bones down, shrink the foot, and lift up as high as you can. Take a deep breath in, okay? And then bring your knee back to midline and back into Tadasana. Okay, great, please. Weight transfers to the other foot. Drive your left foot through the floor. And again, the secret to using one leg is to not need the other one. So right now, all my weight's in the left foot. And like my, my left foot's like ready for it. I can press down like into concrete that's almost dry, lift energetically the inner arch all the way up through midline. So I'm referencing the mid, I'm, I'm hitting the middle. And then whenever you feel that you don't need your right foot anymore, you then lift your right knee, okay? Hands onto hip pointers. And this gives us some fine detail work. Can we keep your hips pointing straight forward as you take your right knee out to the right? Okay, and so you dare to do that slowly and there's, there's, there's gonna be a, at some point for everyone where the hips are tempted to slide out to the right or they're just gonna full on slide out to the right, okay? You can squeeze your right hips and press the right hip forward a little bit to counter that. And that should feel like it gives your lungs a little bit of a lift. All right, so mind's eye from, from the left foot through inseam all the way up through the spine. Bone weight into the floor. Energetically lifting up toward the sky. If you want to take another arm variation, you could. But mind's eye through the midline all the way into the earth. And then through the midline all the way up through the crown of your head. Very good. So one last breath here. Take a deep inhale. Okay, to come out of this, bring uh, your tree knee in. Place the foot onto the floor. And utita para excuse me, Utita Hasta Padangustasana is next. Okay, 
So you can work with tree if you'd like. That's option number one, is just do it again. Option number two, and I'll demonstrate with a strap, is that same journey out to the side and back is now done with a straight leg, okay? And so I'll hold, this is, uh, I'm standing on my right foot again. Well, I, I'm mirroring you. So you're standing on your right foot again, the leg's gonna go for, forward, out, back in, and then we, we release, okay? So I would say take the strap around your left foot to begin and find your tree, find your hip pointers forward, okay? And then once again, if you need a wall, your right hand can be on a wall because your left hand's holding the, uh, your leg, okay? So you drive your foot through the floor, lift your lungs up, and from here, if you'd like, you get a stretch down the back of, the, back of your left leg, okay? So you're lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. So we, did, we already did this on the back, in a sense, right? And my hope is you can get a, a sense of the inseam of the leg through psoas, up through the lungs on your right side. And from here, see if you can keep your hips forward, you're gonna take your leg out to the side, and all the while the hips are pointing as uh, forward as best you can. It doesn't have to go all the way to the side. It just goes to where it goes, hips are pointing forward, lungs are lifting up toward the ceiling. Yeah, the bone weight of your right foot, drive it through the floor. There's your anchor. And breathe through the line from inseam of leg all the way up through crown of head. From here, just like closing, uh, elevator doors closing, French doors, they come back together in the middle. You can let go of the strap, hold the leg for a moment. Feel the psoas engage on your left. And then exhale, come back down. To Tada. All right, very good. So um, there's a lot going on. Hopefully it feels with all this midline work, we're constantly just hitting the middle. We're finding shelter in that. So same thing, on your other side. Transfer weight to left. Make it so that you don't need your right foot. So left leg's now very useful. And you're gonna take the strap around your right foot. Okay? So you drive your left foot through the floor. Okay? Establish what feels like a tree pose. Okay? If you're doing tree, you're, you're focusing on tree. Okay? If you're doing tita hasta padangustasana, uh, you can stretch your right leg forward. Okay? So, there's a lot going on, a stretch in your right, a balancing act on your left and through, all the way up through, um, through spine. Lengthen your lungs up. So constantly refer to, to the core line, inseam through the lungs, along the front side of your spine, through crown of head. And now we're gonna keep our hips pointing forward. So especially that left hip's gonna to wanna to go back. So it's almost like you press the left hip forward, roll your belly opposite heel. All right, and so as your heel's pressing to the right, roll your belly to the left. That helps you maintain the midline. And then drive, like you're trying to imprint concrete, almost dried, with your left foot. Bone energy drives down. Uh, the, the, the bone weight of your foot presses down and then lift your, your prana, the, the, the lung energy, up toward the ceiling. And twice more here. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale. And breathe in. Okay, great. And then from there, you close the French door. You can let go of the strap, keep your leg out, keep on lifting lungs. Feel the engagement of quad and psoas here. And exhale, make your way back into Tadasana. You can put the strap uh, down, arms sweep up overhead here, take a deep breath in, and exhale from there, you bend your knees, and drive both feet through the floor. Now there's no block, but I want you to, it's almost like you're trying to bunch up the mat. So even though the feet are pretty close together, it's like you're trying to bunch, bunch your feet up. Feel the inseam of your legs. Arms sweep up. And so this is chair pose. Interlace your fingers, bend your elbows, and draw your elbow points in. So this is gonna be the headstand variation. We're doing headstand next. 
But if you don't do headstand, you are doing this for the time being. All right, and uh, my, I think for some of you, the headstand might be easier than this. This is pretty full on. You're driving your bones down, lift your lungs up, squeeze your elbow points uh, in toward middle, slide your, energetically sliding your legs toward the middle. Then we'll pause here, another two breaths. Take a big inhale, big exhale. Squeezing in toward midline, take a deep breath in. Okay, great, and then press your hips forward, come up to standing. Great, that's option number one. Uh, option number two, if you want to take headstand against the wall, that's uh, fine, go ahead and do it. Uh, otherwise, headstand in the middle of the room. The options here are going to be uh, headstand proper, pause there, and let me just demonstrate this really quickly. So headstand proper, keep your hips pointed forward, and you can always take tree pose, and the tendency is gonna be for the hips to move. You come up, tree pose, and you come up, okay? So let me get out of that. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna do headstand, we're gonna be working in one of these two options for the next minute. Uh, have fun. Make sure your head's, uh, head's, uh, feel, head and neck feel okay if you're in the headstand. And if you're up against the wall, that tree pose option is still available, okay? If you're not doing headstand, you sit down, feet together, elbows together. And regardless of which one you're doing, there's a lot of energy flying around, a lot of like windiness, gustiness. Reference your midline, breathe into the midline, self-supporting. Practice no matter what you're doing. So another uh, 15 seconds or so. Okay, great. So if you're in headstand, uh, you can uh, bend your legs. Uh, slowly or quickly bring your feet to the floor. Take a child's pose. All right, if you're in Ukatasana chair pose, of course, come into Tadasana. Uh, get out of chair, please. Uh, take a Tadasana. And then after a breath or two of uh, recoup, let's lie on the back again. Find your block, and we're gonna take the block between thighs. Okay, very nice. So uh, you're gonna press your feet into the floor, feel the bone weight of your feet. Drive your feet through the floor. Energetically, it's like you're trying to slide your feet toward one another. Also squeeze the block. And then from here, you're gonna lift up into bridge pose. Feet down to press the hips up. There's a lot of engagement along back body. Still reference along the midline, inner thighs toward the front side of our spine. And because this is a little bit of a back bend, there's room for a lot more breath here, both in the belly and in the heart center. So full abdominal thoracic breath. One last time, lift your hips up another quarter inch. Still squeeze the block as your sacrum lands. And what I'd like you to do is to, what we've been doing so, fo so, so much with the bone weight of the feet, now do the bone weight of the sacrum. That's, the, that's your middle hip bone, the triangular bone. So there is some, there's your natural neutral curve in your low back, your mid back is down, and there's the bone weight of your hips. From here, you're going to um, lift your feet up off the floor, take an upward facing chair pose. And that's option number one. Option number two is you press your heels up toward the ceiling. Now that tends to want to dump out the low back. So what I encourage you to do is to arch your back a little bit and feel the bone weight of your sacrum, not your low back. So feel the sacrum, feel the hips. This is a lot more work on both thighs and also the psoas, okay? All right, from here, uh, and uh, reach your arms by your ears if you'd like. It's another option. I like doing this one because I, I can press my mid-back down um, 
more solidly. You kind of stay here with your legs at 90 degrees, or you can take them a third of the way down, squeeze the block, and there's the bone weight of your sacrum. Press your mid back into the floor as well. And then you can either stay here or take your legs two thirds of the way down. Bone weight of the sacrum, bone weight of your mid back. Squeeze the heck out of the block. All right, great. And then from there, you bring your legs back up to 90, arms out to the sides. You kind of stay here and take your legs to one side and then come back up and take your legs to the other side and come back up. This is vinyasa. Or you can bend your knees and do the same thing. So Jatara, Parivartanasana, inhales in the middle, exhale, squeeze the block, knees to one side. Inhale and come back up to center. Exhale, squeeze the block to the other side. Inhale, come back up to center. It's, you, you cantilever more weight with your legs straight. And as your block goes in one direction, roll your belly the opposite direction. So if you're, if you're used to cardio classes, hip classes, windshield wipers, uh, the, the, the Sanskrit name uh, this basically means it's it's like you're walking around your belly center, which I really like. I, I really love the thought of that because it means your legs are working as well, your arms are working as well. So it's not just abdominal, really. We're also walking around the uh, jatara, like the belly. So you started on one side. Come back up to the center, end on your other side. And then you come back up to the middle. Very good, and then you release feet to the floor. All right, and take a couple, take a couple breaths in the navel. All right, a couple more pieces of huff and puff. We come to, to uh, seated. And so Dandasana. We got rid of the block, uh, but phantom-wise, there's still a phantom block there that we can squeeze into. Doesn't mean your legs have to be together. They're just squeezing inward, okay? And also, like we sort of felt on the back, the tendency is to want to kind of dump into the low back here, especially if the hamstrings are tight. So just like we did in Downward Facing Dog, what I like to do here is to bend your knees. Now you can slide your sitting bones back. Remember how we did that? We, we, we uh, lifted heels, bent the knees, and lifted our sitting bones way back up? We do this in Dandasana. So now you see how that, you see how that self structures the spine and we can lift our lungs up as high as we can. All right, you can reach your arms up toward the sky if you'd like as well. Arms reach up. Now keep your lungs lifted as you press your heels forward again. And my legs happen to straighten without dumping. But I would prioritize the lift in the kidneys over straight legs, okay? So um, see if you can navigate that, all right? Lift your kidneys, lift your lungs, arch your back, a little bit of an arch in the back. You kind of stay here. If it feels available, lift one leg up a little bit without dumping. Arch your back, one leg lifts just a half inch. There's your psoas, and then that leg comes down. Same thing on the other side. Arch your back, lift your lungs, other heel presses, uh, lifts up and exhale, come back down, and release. I guess not necessarily release. Release is a relative term there, because you're still engaging, you're still activating. That's option number one, to lift one leg, lift the other leg. If you want to try boat pose, more or less the same thing, we just tilt everything back 45 degrees. And once again, I would prioritize find some, finding support in your low back and a lift of your lungs over straight legs. So you can hold your hamstrings to start, Arch your back, lift your lungs, and then from here, uh, shins can be like, you know, be bent, they can be parallel, they can straighten the legs a little longer, and you're squeezing, squeezing the phantom block. You can let go if you'd like. And then arch your back, lift your thighs up, but also lift your kidneys up, lift your lungs up, and several breaths here. So if there's length along the front side of your spine, there's plenty of, plenty of space to breathe into. And there's two more breaths here. Take an inhale, big exhale. And one last time, breathe in. All right, great. Come back to Dandasana, staff pose. Very nice. 
So notice all the work we've did to cultivate that feeling of solidity and that we can reference the midline. Even with all the gustiness, the wind. So then please keep your right foot forward and place the left foot in the inner leg somewhere for Janu Shirshasana. So you can press leg into foot, foot into leg, arch your back, roll your belly to the right, and fold down your right leg. You can use a strap for this, hands to thigh, hands to shin, hold the foot, whatever you want to do. And we've done a lot of refraining from rounding. Uh, on this one, feel free to round your spine a little. And with all of this self-stabilizing work we've done, we can now, the, the rounding invites a little bit of introspection. Since this does feel like a lower stakes posture than, than boat pose, for example. But we can sort of notice the Notice the inward, the, the interior space we've cultivated with it. And two more breaths here. Take a big inhale. Exhale. One last time. Okay, great. And then you make your way back up. Extend your right leg forward. Sorry, extend your left leg forward. Switch sides. Leg presses into foot, foot presses into leg. Arch your back a little bit, belly rolls to, uh, toward the straight leg, and you fold down your straight leg. So on the other side, you can bridge the gap with a strap, thigh, hands on thighs, hands on shin, hands on foot. And from here, you can round your spine a little bit to cultivate a bit of introspection, looking within, self-study. And one more breath here. Take a deep breath in. All right, and then arrive back up and lengthen the spine. This time, place feet together, knees wide and Baddha Kondasana. You can hold your feet, hold your shins. If you like to, you can peel, uh, open up the feet like a book. That helps get your knees a little lower for most people. Uh, so a little bit more length uh, through the inseams, which we've uh, exercised so, so well. Knees down, lift your lungs up, and then from here you can round your spine a bit, tuck your chin a little bit, and if it feels okay for your knees and hips, you can use your elbows and gently press not only down, but also out, because we don't want to just lay into the hip joint here. Uh, I, I also like a little bit of expanding, creating some space along inseam of your legs. So it's almost like your elbows can, can press not only down, but also out. So we're cultivating some interior space through abdomen, through inseam, and breathe here another few times. Okay, very good. So you come back up, you can keep the feet as they are, slide your glutes, tailbone forward, lie on the back, Supta Baddha Konasana. So last, last pose before final relaxation. Pause here. And we've done plenty of work here, so building up the uh, building up the strength of our midline, the stability, and now we get a chance to relax into the space of our midline, because it is a very spacious place. Especially along the front side of the spine, throughout the lungs, Great. And then from here,
here. Extend one leg forward, other leg forward into Shavasana. So final relaxation. And if you need to cover up or if you need to add any support under thighs, you can do that. If you'd rather not relax on the floor and there's a, a, a sofa somewhere, a couch, you can lie on that. All right, so as you're settling down, settling in, there's almost two parts to this, this koan that, um, that I referenced. The first part, someone asked Master Sho of Koke, when things come from the four directions and eight dimensions, what then? Sho said, hit the middle. The student immediately bowed. So my, my hope is we, you, things, this practice really came from the four directions and eight dimensions, right? We had to think about a whole bunch of things at once, especially during our balance postures. But we could always hit the middle. We could always reference the midline. So allow your, the bone weight of your entire skeleton to manifest itself. Feel the weight of your bones. Feel the protection of your bones. Feel the protection of your skin. And relax into that space. Soften down. Feel the weight Weight of thigh bones. Thigh bones soften. The two bones of your shins relax away from one another. And all that work we did in the feet, all the little bones of your feet, allow them to, to energetically relax away from one another and soften. Feel each vertebrae of your spine unwind and release all the way from low back to the crown of your head, base of skull, releasing and relaxing almost like a series of dominoes that were set up. And now the dominoes are falling, which you can think of relaxing. The dominoes are just relaxing. They don't have to be upright anymore. And allow that domino energy to relax down your arms. Dominoes of arms, dominoes out to each uh, finger, thumb tips. And feel the bone weight of your skull, relax your jaw. Feel the weight of your teeth. So relax and soft, uh, and feel the weight of the bottom row of teeth. Relax the top row of teeth. And feel the hard palate, the roof of your mouth. Heavy. Right behind your eyes, soften. And you can enjoy the space within. The second part of the koan, which I really love, uh, the, the master show. Show says, on the way to a service in the village, I ran into a wild storm of wind, wind and rain and sheltered myself in an old shrine. On the way to a service in the village, I ran into a wild storm of wind and rain and sheltered myself in an old 
shrine. Wait, so guide your awareness to your fingers, to your toes, gently wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Guide your awareness to your interior shrine. Notice it, take a couple slightly deeper inhales and exhales. And then from here, draw one knee into your chest. Give your knee a good hug. Breathe into your low back. And then switch legs, draw your other knee in, breathe into your low back, and draw both knees in. Take an inhale, and exhale. From here, roll over to one side. Make your way up to a comfortable uh, seat and possibly elevate your hips if you can. We'll end with a, a small piece of breath work to, uh, to sort of fulfill our commitment to the uh, core line. So uh, you can, if you have the bolster, you can sit on the bolster. Uh, a block can work or any blanket. And you can also do this work in uh, a chair. So as you, uh, as you get yourself seated, Feel the bone weight of your legs, feel the bone weight of your arms, and then feel this sort of upward pranic drawing. Prana sort of means energy, but it's also synonymous with breath. So space in the belly, space in the lungs, and I invite you to start, uh, to, start to demarcating inhale and exhale into into counts of four. So maybe a four count as you breathe in, and then a four count as you exhale. And the point of this is to make it feel like you're starving yourself of oxygen. Uh, and it's also not that like you're pushing the boundaries of the breath so far that it makes you feel nervous. So this, uh, the count should be intuitively long. Your breath is intuitively deep. And whatever the length of your inhale is, so such as your exhale. And so this midline that we've referenced, as you're, as you're counting in and counting out, that midline that we've referenced uh, for the practice, breathe into it, infuse it with the energy of your breathing. 
and infuse it with the mindfulness of your attention. So mind to breath, breath into body, and continue that for the next minute or so. end on your next inhale. So you take a four count in and then relax your breathing practice and allow your body to breathe for you. So notice the space we've cultivated, the structure the work we did to support our midline, support our shrine. And notice the vitality within. Great. So thank you so much. I hope, I hope that felt self-supportive, fun, uh, challenging. Uh, thank you so much for your practice and take care. Namaste.